A man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Peter says, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. You Christians in Asia Minor, have you tasted the kindness of the Lord? You people here in Portland, have you tasted the kindness of the Lord? If you tasted the kindness of the Lord, then why do you abuse his ministers? If you tasted the kindness of the Lord, why do you rape his ministers? If you're doing it to me, you're doing it to others. Because I did not begin the church here in Portland. The church here in Portland have been here for hundreds of years. Why do you abuse the church? Why do you persecute the church? The gospel message that we've been given is this one here that says what? Be reconciled to God, All right? It's a message of reconciliation, All right? All Americans be reconciled to God. Why? The issue in, in life is not when you go, but where you go. Bread cannot determine where you go. Money cannot determine where you go. It doesn't matter how much you make per year. You can make $2 million per year. And that still doesn't determine when and where you go. Even if you work at the top of the building, in some of those offices, even if you get to fly in Air Force One with the President of the United States and you work with his cabinet, that doesn't t determine when and where. A man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The reason why you're having all these problems in Portland, Oregon, with criminals is because they're not living by the word of God. What's driving them? Sin, unbelief. They don't believe in the word of God. They don't believe that God has spoken. So they live however they want to live. What's wrong with Gabriel and MacArthur? Oh yes, even the pastor. They don't live by the word of God. How many times have I been prodded to close God's word and to head off to 122nd Street to do the, the Macarena dance with those people? If I had opened the word of God, I wouldn't have gone. But do you know what they would have done to me? They would have increased the persecution to my feet. Increased the persecution to my genital. Increased the persecution to my life. So I have to do what? Become all things to all men. And in becoming all things to all men, I have to remember the grace of God and God is a forgiving God. I read to them this passage last night. This is my last point. Coming out of Romans chapter eight. My last word last night was rape. Today it's this. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God calls us to reconciliation because there is a problem between you and your creator. Why are people doing evil? Because there is a problem called sin in your heart. Why do you cheat on your husband? Why is it that you can't keep your clothes on? Why are you always holding hands, gentlemen? Because there's an issue of sin in the heart. Right? There's an issue of sin in the heart. And the only way you can stop those things is by going to God and saying, Father, forgive me for my sin. I repent. Bless me with your Holy Spirit of promise. Lord, I want to be reconciled to you. I want to patch things up. I want to stop living a life of sin. I want to stop living a life of bigotry. I want to stop living a life where I'm denying others their civil rights. Lord, I don't want to keep practicing civil wrongs. If the Lord pulled out a certificate to show you the record of wrongs that you have done, wrongs that you have said, things you've gotten involved in to plot and to hurt others, right? What do you think would be the outcome 
of your day? What would be the outcome of your day? Hell, of course. Nothing but hell. But because of God's grace, reconciliation has been offered to John and Gabriel. You need to be reconciled to God, the two of you. Stop persecuting men out of Port au Prince, Gabriel. You need to be reconciled to God. Stop persecuting students that are in the seminary, John. Be reconciled to God. Stop arresting men of color and judging them upstairs. You need to be reconciled to God. Stop discriminating against internationals in this country and considering them unequal to you. You need to be reconciled to God. Stop turning men from God to the LGBTQ community by force, stripping them of their dignity, integrity, manhood, and humanity, and keeping them roaming the streets at night with barely any clothes on in the winter, spring, summer, and fall. Stop trespassing into people's apartments and damaging their properties, raping them, and be reconciled to God. You see, you're not gonna stop doing these evil things. Just like a serpent is never gonna stop hissing. A dog is never gonna stop barking. A killer is never gonna stop killing. A murderer is never gonna stop plotting other people's murders until they are reconciled to God. Because when you are reconciled to God, he will take away that evil nature. You see, that's why Peter says what he says. That's why Peter says what he says. What did Peter say? Right? Peter says in chapter 2, Long for the pure milk of the word, that by the, uh, the, the, the pure milk of the word, you may grow in respect to salvation. You cannot grow spiritually in Christ-like character. You see, without Christ, you practice civil wrongs and you turn. Just like it says in Romans 1, 18 through 32. You turn, you become violent, aggressive, and hateful. The only way you can get out of this situation is by being reconciled to God. When I leave here, you're going to go right back to being who you were. Hard Americans. Hateful Americans. Judgmental Americans. No-nonsense Americans. Chip on the shoulder Americans. What's not going to happen? You're not going to be reconciled to God. You're not going to go and say into your prayer closet and ask God for forgiveness. You're not. Because that's not the American way of life. The American way of life is to honor the civil wrongs. To honor sin. Right? To honor the wicked. Subtly. Right? It's not to honor God and His Son. You're going to go right back to being and doing. So that's why we the church constantly remind you in Christ to be reconciled to God. Only reconciliation to God will give you the spirit, and the spirit will stop all this nonsense. Your psychiatrists, your psychologists, the places that you send people to get help, it's not me who needs your help, it's you who need God's help. I wouldn't be here if there was something right, if everything that you were doing was right. I wouldn't be here. Obviously, you're doing something wrong to me that is drawing my attention. You cutting me at night? Me being molested? Gabriel being put on an intercom? My civil rights being denied? You're drawing my attention. You're bringing me here. Why do we call non-emergency? Why do we call 911? Wrongs that are being done. Why does a woman say, stop raping me? Because she's being raped. Why do men say, stop molesting me? Because they're being molested. Stop robbing my bank. Because somebody is robbing their banks. We don't say stop if nothing is happening. There's no reason for us to cry wolf. 
But the problem is your nature is going to kick back in. And when your nature kicks back in, you're going to go right back to being and doing what you are doing. You could put a muzzle on a dog so it could stop barking. But as soon as you remove the muzzle, the dog is going to start barking again. While I'm here, some of the things that you are doing subtly to honor the sin that's in your soul, you will not do. But as soon as I leave, you're going to go right back into it. Right back into living in sin. Right back into discriminating. Right back into committing civil wrongs and denying Africans civil rights and the international civil rights. Therefore, we say repent, be reconciled to God. Stop sinning. Today, if you want to do that, you could do it with me or you could do it by yourself. You could go to God and say, God, forgive us. Or you could harden your heart like this stone here and say, no, we will not take these instructions from a nigger. We will not take these instructions from a foreigner. We will not take this message that this man from a third world country, right? Some third world country rat. We're not taking your instructions. Get out of our sight. Don't come back to our justice center. Keep in mind God is in heaven and we are on earth. And on earth, all of us are equal because we all need the sunshine. We all need the rain. We all need the oxygen. We all need the food, right? And we all need the word. And we all need the spirit. If you don't deal with it now, when are you going to deal with it? That's why the question is, from, a hun- from, a, from birth to 100, when are you going to die? When are you going to deal with the issue? It's not when you die, but where you're going. If you don't reconcile yourself now, who's to say you're going to be here next week? Working. Who's to say you're going to be here next month? Working. Who's to say you're going to be here next year? How many have died in 2021 that are no longer in 2022? I think you know what to do to be reconciled to God. Gabriel, stop sinning. Stop touching me. I'm not your husband. John MacArthur, give me back my life. Enough with your stupid process. It didn't work. Do something else. Go back to scripture and make it right with God. And as for the rest of you, if you've never been reconciled to the Almighty, now is the time to be reconciled. Now is the time to kneel and now is the time to yield. Now is the time to submit to the Lordship of Christ. Now is the time to yield to the Lordship of Christ. Now is the time to stop sinning because you, my friend, are not promised another breath Father, I pray at this hour that the American people would understand we're not just yelling at them. We're talking to them. Talking to them about the word of life. Talking to them and reminding them that no one lives by bread alone. But everyone lives by... We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Your mouth that says, yes, you can have a child, or no, you can't have a child. Yes, the operation for cancer will work, I will allow it. Or no, I won't allow the operation for cancer to work. This is her time. You, O oh Lord, who determines whether we have a sunshining day or a blistering winter day. You who determines whether their heart beats beat another beat. Or that says that's it. Time is up. You go. I pray for the American people that they would understand that your word is not a toy. It is what you have spoken to generations past. If those generations didn't exist, we wouldn't be here today. We are here because they were there then. And when you spoke to them then, you were also talking to us in the future. And as you're talking to us in the future now, Lord, you're also talking to the future. The children that we bear, the babies who don't know nothing about your word and who knows nothing about you, who's gonna be running this justice center. Who's going to be working at this Starbucks? Who's going to be running this government? They're not even aware yet.
nothing yet. I pray, Lord, that you would give these people your grace and your spirit when they yield, when they submit, and when they repent, when they seek you out for reconciliation, when they make it personal in their hearts and understand that they are your image. This I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen.